The economy has not been growing for the last 10 years, so obviously that has created a, a very negative impact on the population. Unemployment has increased, uh, migration to the mainland has increased. Uh, in addition to that, we also have a severe debt crisis. The government is simply not able to honor all the bonded debt it has issued over the last 40, 50 years. We're talking around approximately $70 billion. And in addition to that, um, which is a very important third factor, is the pension crisis. Uh, Puerto Rico has promised its government workers uh, very significant pensions um, in the order of around 40, 43 billion dollars. So when you add up all the debt, all the promises that the Puerto Rico government has made over the years, we're talking about 100 billion dollars approximately. This in an economy where only a million people work in the formal economy, so it's around $100,000 per worker, and the average salary for a worker in Puerto Rico is a little bit over $20,000, so obviously a debt is not sustainable. Well, it has impacted government services, especially uh, people who depend on government for special assistance for the children's education, for example, children that have learning disabilities that need special treatment or therapies, uh, funds for that have, have been cut. Uh, also, funding for the public health system in Puerto Rico has been significantly cut. So there are longer waits uh, for referrals and longer waits uh, for life-saving treatments, uh, things like chemotherapy, for example. You may have to wait uh, up to a month to get an appointment uh, if you are on the government health care system. And uh, it has created a lot of uncertainty in, in the island. A lot of people are unwilling to invest in Puerto Rico because we don't know what's going to happen with the debt. So all of that has contributed to rising unemployment and again, a rising migration to the United States. But the government of Puerto Rico um, depends uh, a lot to a large extent on federal funds uh, for its functioning. Uh, we are not a sovereign country, so we don't have our own um, money, our own currency so that we can devalue to uh, pay off our own debt. Also, uh, a lot of services that in the United States are provided by the federal government are capped in Puerto Rico, especially health care services and um, other uh, programs that tend to help the poor. Uh, they apply to Puerto Rico but subject to very strict caps, so the government has had to take over that role. Uh, over the federal government. So it's, it, it's been uh, a very difficult situation because you're talking about uh, cutting expenditure for uh, programs that mostly affect the poorest people in Puerto Rico. And uh, I think it's unfair to say it's only Puerto Rico's blame to, to blame for this. Uh, Puerto Rico, as I said, is not a sovereign country, neither is a state of the union, so there's very little we can actually do in terms of economic policy. Uh, the Supreme Court has decided that it can treat Puerto Rico differently from the states in terms of how many programs apply there. And not being a sovereign country means we don't have access to you know, multilateral lending from the World Bank, the IMF, things like that. So when you combine those two things, is yes, I mean, Puerto Rico spent a lot, but the only thing that Puerto Rico could do in terms of economic policy was tax, spend, and issue debt. And uh, for many years, we did that very well. Actually, you look at Puerto Rico, the island is electrified, we had good roads, uh, we had you know, good hospitals, uh, but over the last 15 years, we have used a lot of that money to finance deficits, and that's what really got us into problems. It allows Puerto Rico uh, a process to restructure its debt. Again, since Puerto Rico is in this kind of limbo, kind of uh, in between, between a foreign country and, and a state, there was really no clear path forward uh, to restructure the amount of debt we have, which basically every analyst believes is it's unsustainable. So that's, that's number one. Number two, uh, it creates a federal oversight board. Um, so uh, the federal government is taking an active interest in, in Puerto Rico. And I think, you know, people debate back and forth whether that's a good thing or not. But um, at the end of the day, I think uh, it, it's in the federal government's best interest for Puerto Rico to come out of this hole, given that it has acted this way. So, and that federal oversight board has uh, broad powers uh, over uh, Puerto Rico's fiscal and economic uh, policies. So a lot of people are going to be looking for that board to implement some very diffi difficult decisions.
A lot of people just really don't know that Puerto Rico has been part of the United States since 1898 uh, and that we became citizens in 1917. Um, it, it's that part of American history between the Civil War and Teddy Roosevelt's uh, presidency that <laughs> don't get that doesn't get taught that much uh, in the United States. And um, in in general, over the last 30 or 40 years, things were relatively calm and quiet in the island. So it's only when the debt crisis exploded that people started paying attention. Say, oh, by the way, you know, we, we do have three and a half million fellow citizens that live in the island, and we should treat them uh, with respect and dignity. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.